Hi there, welcome back to the YouTube channel. Oh, sorry while I set up. Um, we're going ahead with probably one of the last Dominary United Commander cards I'm going to be covering for a little while. I'm still to pick up some more, but this one's going to be the last one I'm thinking of doing for this week. Well, and it's the first one of this week, so there may be a few viewer videos this week due to the fact I've got other things going on, like work's a bit hectic and so on and so forth. So I've done a whole bulk of videos. If you've watched the videos from last week, you'll see me wearing the same outfit. They're all recorded on the same day. I'm doing a little bit of CGB type stuff where he does a whole bulk load of videos before he disappears off. I'm doing a whole bulk load now purely because work's getting busy and I don't quite get the time in the evenings anymore to do what I want to do. So, but that's not your problem. That's a me problem, not a you problem. You're here for the video. Today's one's one of those strange ones. We are going ahead with yet another tribal deck. Yeah, that's right. There's a tribal deck. It's a deck I would probably never play in a competitive environment, even though when you look at it, you'll go, oh my God, you've put all these things in. It's going to be really expensive. It's competitive. It's really not. It's going to be a deck where you probably drop all the expensive stuff I've put in and you turn it into something you can teach people to play with because it is something that's a bit fun and you know you get new players in new players like big creatures this has a lot of big creatures in it so without further ado let me introduce you to baru worm speaker two green green for a human druid that's a three three worms you control get plus two plus two and have trample seven and a green tap it create a four four worm creature token this ability costs X less to activate, where X is the greatest power amongst worms you control. Worms. I like worms. Worms are great in my garden. You know, they turn the soil over, they keep things going. The birds like coming down and eating them. Worms in magic ain't so great. Hence why I'm saying it's not a really competitive deck. However, I have gone through it all. I have picked the ones I think are the best for this deck. And, you know, let's just really talk about the deck and you can all laugh at me. What I will say about this deck is I've included some expensive cards to make it work on MTGO. I've mentioned it. You're going to take them out if you're playing this in real life. I get that entirely. But for MTGO purposes, I've had to include them to try and make it a little bit better. So, the first thing you'll notice is the lands. Broker's Hideout, Cabaretti Courtyard, go and search for a forest. Lovely. Castle Garen Brick is key. You need to get this card if you're playing it in real life. Four mana turning into six to play creatures is important. Command Towers in, just because I figured it would be. Evolving Wilds, Fabled Passage, then a whole load of forests going all the way down. So the first expensive card is Gaze Cradle. There you go. I've had to put it in on MTGO so we can get there. We've got Kalani Garden, but we've also got Nykthos in here. Now, Nykthos is what I'd call a reasonable card at the moment in real life, and it's fairly cheap on here, but again, it's another one of those cards we're going to need for this deck. Path of Ancestry is in, so we can do the Scrying, um, Reliquary Tower, so on and so forth. Temple of the False God gives us more mana. Riveters, Outlook, Terramorphic, just go and search the lands out. And then I have put Yavimar Cradle of Growth in. So if you do have these in play, you can just tap them for green mana. Bear it in mind, you don't need to sacrifice them off. Talking about the ramp, this is where I'm saying it's going to be a little bit more expensive. You probably won't do this in real life, but at the moment you probably need to if you're going to play online. Mox Tantalite, Soul Talisman aren't too bad to buy in real life. Mana Crypt is, Mana Vault is, <laughs> I'm aware of it. Bear in mind, you can take both of these out quite happily along with the Gaze Cradle and this deck will still be fun to play in real life. But if you're playing online, you're probably going to need these to ramp into stuff quickly. Along with the rest of the ramp, we've got Arcane Signet, we've got Felwild Stone, I've got Mindstone in, I've got Moss Diamond in. That's really the heart of my ramp. I suppose you can, you know, I've said before, count Solemn Sim in there. So that's why we're doing it. The rest of the deck is fairly self-explanatory. Elixir's in, just so we can shuffle everything back in when it gets killed off. Once upon a time, to go and find, you know, probably if you play it early in the game, to go and find a land. You play it late in the game to go and hit one of your worms, and I will get to them. Sylvan Scrying, three visits are in just to go and do land ramp. It's along with Cultivate, Circuitous Root, Explosive Vegetation. I don't think I've got any more. I think I cut everything else out. Yeah, we went that far. Just go and find your lands. Go and get your basic lands. 
Azusa's in, so you can drop him into play. Garrick's Uprising. We've got a lot of creatures, believe it or not, with power of four or more. Who the thought worms have a big high power? So you're going to be drawing cards. It's also quite nice. It gives all our creatures trample. So even our little solemn sim down here will get trample with Garrick's Uprising in. Not quite sure how good a 2-2 two -two trample is going to be, but that's a story for a different day. Growing Rights is in to give us a second version of Gaze Cradle. Again, this is one of those cards I would pick up in paper at the moment if you don't already own them. I'm lucky I do. I reckon, I realised what they were very early on during Ixalan and I picked up a playset which I played in standard forever. Um, and then the price went dun 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 and bing! <laughs> um, yeah, so keep it there. I've chucked in a Rex Age just so I've got a little bit of enchantment removal. There's quite a few enchantments kicking around an artifact so I've chucked one in. That's the only reason that's here. Rights are flourishing. We can play those extra lands, draw those extra cards. You get the idea. We want to ramp up quickly. The first worm's here. It's Brood Hunter Worm. It's not the best worm in the world, but it's a 4 3 for 4 mana. I'll cope with that. And if we've got Barrow in play, that becomes a 6 5 with Trample for 4 mana, which is good enough for me to do this. Frontier Siege is in just for the Khan's ability. We've got no creatures with flying, so this will be for the Khan's ability to add mana. Keep that in mind. Kamatra's Acolyte's in as the. Um, creature version of dear Nykthos down here so we can go and get the mana every permanent we have in play will have green mana in it hence why it's here monster manual this is if there was ever a deck for monster manual this is another one of those decks creatures in this deck are really expensive <laughs> sneaking them into play for two mana is probably a really good idea oracle and move die extra land we play with the top card revealed yes your opponent will see what's coming but getting those extra land drops is really useful Pouncing Worm, I put it in. It's a 3-3 for 4 mana, which is fairly bad. A potential, what, 5-5 five, five for 7 mana with haste is not too bad, especially with Barrow in play. That would be a 7-7 seven, seven haste trampling worm. Hmm, not, like I say, early in the game, rubbish. Late in the game, yeah, better. With the commander in play, fantastic keep it in venture fourth sin just so we can go and do a little bit more of that man land ramp it's an interesting card this one exile the cards put land card that comes into the bat battlefield and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order then it gets exiled and it gets suspended and it does it again and again and again so once you get it suspended once it's just going to keep going and generating that value yes it's going to take three turns every turn to get land into play great but you know it's coming and it probably won't get counted in all honesty. Right. Garrick Wild Speaker's in. It gives us a beast if we need it. it untaps the lands if we need it more. But more importantly, it's another way of giving all our creatures a really big boost and trample to the end of turn. Hence why it's here. Soul Sky Soul Soul Swallower is also in. It's a 3 3 for 4, which isn't great. But if we got four types of cards among the cards in our graveyards we get to put in we get every turn we get to put an extra load of plus one plus one counters on it now getting cards you know get lands into play quite happily we've got an instant we've got sorceries i would imagine it'll be a bit more complicated to get something else in but if the worst comes to worst you can always wreck sage one of your own enchantments to give you the fourth one and having that go off four mana is potentially a six six then a nine nine then a twelve twelve it's got to be worth a gamble, hasn't it, Shirley? Um, Elfheim Worms in. You might as well have this in as well. Now it's from Dominaria United. Vigilance Trample, 5-4 is where you got the trample. 7-4, seven, 7-6. Seven, yeah, go for it. Arrogant Worm, in case we get hit with the discard stuff. Madnessing it in. 3 mana for a 4-4 four, four with tramples. Pretty damn good. I've put the other version of Barrow in as well. Um, whenever a forest enters the battlefield, green creatures you control get plus one, plus one, and gain trample to the end of turn. Seemed like a bit of a no-brainer to me, hence why it went in. And if the worst comes to the worst, you, can just discard, you can't discard it. So it's just the first ability, so just ignore me. I forgot it had to, you have to have two copies of it for grandeur to work. Sorry. Bellowing Tangle Worms in. <laughs> yeah, gives it Intimidate. Um, it can only then all your green creatures can then only be blocked by other green creatures or artifact creatures. No one else see a problem with this because I don't. Five mana, four four, not best stats, but the intimidate makes up for it. Defiler Revigor is fantastic. This is how worms should be. 
Um, it's double six six for five mana trample. Get to pay two life to reduce the casting cost of any of these spells, permanent spells. Um, and then whenever you cast a green permanent spell, per plus one plus one counter on each creature you control. This is just ridiculous. This will see terror. This will see every bit of targeted removal going straight towards it. But it is great. And we will hopefully be able to cycle it back in with the Elixir at some stage. But bear in mind, this is just a fantastic card. And if worms are going to be this way in future, pick up your Barrow Worm Speakers now because the Worm Dicks will take over Commander. Right. <laughs> Keeper of Fables is in just so we can draw some cards when our Worms hit. Um, this is in just so we can tap it, tap the forest for all mana. You know, as I said, there's like 21 forests in the deck, so let's get the mana going on them. If we can get the minus eight off all winning good, not really interested in turning my lands into um, elementals though, so bear that in mind. Primal Command gives us another way to shuffle our graveyard into a library. Oh, sorry, gives us another way to shuffle our graveyard into a library, and we can go and search for a creature card if we need to find a worm. And really, this is where the worms start coming, is here. Um, I'm still playing Bootlegger Stash. I'm tr still trying to make it work. I had it out in a game I was playing the other day, and it got nicked before I could make any treasure tokens. But hey, we'll try again. But we need the mana, so it's worth giving it a go. Right. Bad Worm, Vast Wood, wood Gorger, 5-6 six for 6 mana that does nothing, but it's a 5-6. And you've got to remember, when I'm looking at these worms, by the way, I'm not going to keep saying it. Baru makes them so much better with a plus two, plus two in trample. So, yeah. If I say five, six, I really mean seven, eight with trample, just so we're clear. Canopy Gorger would be an eight, seven with trample. Mana Reflection is here to double our mana up so we can cast more than one worm in a turn. Pathbreaker Worm gets the pair in with another thing, and you get to give that trample the other one that it pairs with. So that's pretty good. A six, four for six mana I can cope with. I'll, I'll live with that. Worm Coil Engine's in. It's a worm. Okay, it's a Phyrexian worm, but it is a worm. So hence why it's here. And when it dies, it leaves you some worm artifact tokens around, which get really good. So if it dies, I mean, when it comes into play as an 8-8, that's fine if you've got Baru in play. That's absolutely great. But when it dies, it leaves you behind 10 power worth of creature over two creatures. So two five fives with Baru in play, which is just quite funny in my head. Anyway, um, Bramble Worm has reach. Gives you life when it comes into play, and then you can exile it from your graveyard to gain five more life if you've got an issue. Carnage Worm has got Bloodthirst. You can sack things off to it you no longer need. Probably not going to sack that much off to it, but we'll see. Um, Duskale Dale Worm's in, 7-7 seven, seven with Trample already. Sand Worm's in, 7-7, seven, seven, nine, 9 with Trample, don't forget. So, hey. Siege Worm's got Convoke, so your other worms can help cast it. Um, Sifter Worms in for the Scry Valley and gain some life, and you know, it becomes a 9 9 with Trample. Elder Scale Worm protects you, um, you know, which isn't too bad at all. But it's 7 mana for a 7 7. Likewise, Palaka Worms in a 7 mana 7 7 and gains you 7 life. Book Worms in, <laughs> it just makes me laugh every time I read this card. Um, get into the battlefield, you gain 3 life, and then put. Bookworm from your, your graveyard into your library third from top for three mana. It's not a bad deal at all. Yes, it costs eight to cast it, but that's the way it goes. Sandworm Convergence helps you. It stops all those annoying flies attacking you. And you do get a worm token at the beginning of your end step each turn. So that's quite cool. Greater Henge, Ramp, Life Gain, Card Draw, make your worms bigger. Genesis Wave, because you do want to find a way of getting off a big Genesis Wave. You want to try and get your X. You probably want to do it for about 13, 14 mana. Um, so you get X at 11. It's probably the best thing you could do with this card. And then you'll hit so many worms and things will be quite funny for your opponent when they see all these big snaky worm things coming into play. These are the two reasons as to why I want to say you want to get this to 11, X is 11, because you do want to hit Worm Spine, World Spine Worm if you can, and you do want to hit your Imperious Great Worm, because this will give people nightmares where it's indestructible at 16, 16, but, you know, plus 2, plus 2, Trample, 18, 18, indestructible Trample. Um, and obviously World Spine Worm comes into play, gives you all those Worm tokens when it dies, and it shuffles back into your library, so it's always going to keep coming back. 
Um, and it is it's put into a graveyard from anywhere. So even if it gets milled, it gets shuffled back in. So you're always going to have that there with a bit of luck. And that's it. That's my take on Baru Worm Speaker. There may be another couple of Commander decks coming up that involve cards from Dominaria United. If there's anything I haven't covered in the last few weeks that you want to see me cover, let me know in the comments down below. I've got one or two ideas of the last few things I want to cover, but I am drying up of ideas at the moment. So if there's something you want to see me do, even if it's an uncommon legend, anything at all, let me know. Otherwise, what I'm going to start doing over the next few weeks is going back over some of the other decks I've done and just do really quick updates on the decks. So there'll be an update video coming out on a few of them. Um, the first one of which will probably be Miram at some stage. Now I've updated it online to what I'm playing in real life. Likewise, um, the Rivaz deck at the moment is getting a lot of traction. So I'll probably try and update that at some stage as well. So I've had a few private messages on that. But that's my plan. But if there is anything you want to see from Dominaria United, let me know. Hit the follow button here. Hit the subscribe button here on YouTube, I should say. I'd love it if you can. I'm trying to get the numbers up, as I said. So please, please, please subscribe. I'd love to be have 100 people coming and watching my videos. At the moment, as I record this, I'm still on 53. But this is recorded a week ago from when you, you're watching it. So that might have changed by then. Beyond that, the other thing I'd really love is you can come and give me a follow on Twitch as well. By the time you see this will be a week away from my birthday and I'd really like to be at 150 followers on Twitch by that stage. Not 150 subscribers, so if you've got an Amazon subscription you're not using, I'm not going to say no to it as a birthday treat on the 3rd of October. But yeah, if you can just go and hit the follow button over there on Twitch, I'd love it. That'd be great. But that's it for me for now. Um, let me know if there's any more Dominaria United Commanders you want me to cover I'll quite happily cover them and I'll be playing them on stream like I always do so thanks for watching, take care and hopefully I'll catch you soon I'm out, bye